Hi, all, and welcome to our third episode of Intersections, I prospect short form content series exploring the changes in brand engagement, digital behavior, and consumer habits, and how brands can succeed in the ever shifting landscape. I couldn't think of a better way to round out this series than with Whitney Fishman, EVP Head of Innovation, and Liz Vance, EVP Managing Director at iProspect US, to take a look towards 2024 and the predictions and bets we have for the industry as we lean into the new year. Whitney and Liz, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Chelsea. This is so fun. We'd love to kick it off with you introducing yourselves and sharing a bit about your current roles. As Chelsea said, I'm um, Liz Vance, and um, I've been with iProspect for 15 years. Um, Most of my experience has been in retail. Um, I do um, dabble in some healthcare and telecom, um, but just very heavy retail background over here and excited to, to talk about what we're looking at in 24. I'm Whitney. I run innovation for iProspect. So I work with client leadership like Liz, as well as directly with our clients across incredible industries to see around corners and really just lean into the future of emerging media and consumer behavior. Awesome. Well, we're here to talk about 2024 and some big bets. Um, I'll keep this as broad as possible to get your thinking. Let's start with what are your three big bets each for 2024? So 2023 was the year of AI buzzword bingo. I'm very excited to see in 2024, really the house of cards is going to fall, right? You have so many companies that will claim they are driven by AI, AI at the core. But if you look under the hood, there's not that much there. What we are going to see, given the economy and the marketplace, a lot of mergers, acquisitions, and folds of companies that really don't offer true utility or don't have the capabilities or the technology and frankly, the AI spine to really drive opportunities and utility for our clients. So you're gonna see a lot of companies combining, again, assets, acquisitions, mergers, pieces coming together to have fewer players in the landscape, but more opportunities to double down and really dig deep on how do we leverage disparate data points and connectivity and really see what some of these tools and technologies can actually do from a generative AI standpoint for both the back end of our clients in terms of data collection, privacy, and use cases, as well as front of house and how it can provide better, stronger, more interesting consumer experiences. I think one of the things that's been very interesting is a lot of research has come out recently about consumers being interested in brands that use AI and wanting to use AI for better deals, better shopping experiences. But the irony is, right, a true AI enhanced experience shouldn't feel like it's tech driven. You shouldn't feel like you're talking to an AI chatbot. You should feel like you're talking to a human. It should be a seamless experience, not a robotic experience. So I do think what that actually indicates is consumers want their brands to be tech facing. I think there's a bit of a disconnect of what consumers think tech facing means. They don't want to see the back end. They don't want to see how the sausage is proverbially made, but they want to feel the seamlessness. They want to feel the enhancements. They want to feel they're sharing their data, it's going to be used. So I think this notion of frictionless experiences, it's not a new trend, but I think by leveraging generative AI into the back end and front end of the experiences more, we are going to see the actual brought to life and the actual execution of a more seamless experience. Yeah, for sure. I think next year is, it's an election year, it's an Olympics year. Like the experiences are not only going to have to be frictionless, they're going to have to cut through and actually resonate. There's going to be so much noise. Um, So I think it's critical that the technology and the tools that we're using are helping to continue to humanize what we're delivering to consumers and to make the experience really, really relevant for them. At the end of the day, after you've been blasted with so much content all day and next year we know from history that next year that a lot of the content we're going to be exposed to is going to be negative and just really loud during an election year i think it's really important that as brands we find ways to like make that deep connection and to your point being able for that to be frictionless and to really cut through i think is going to be really important so i totally agree with you on that on the ai front for me i think it comes I mean, AI, everyone's talking about it. To your point, everyone wants to use it. What I've seen in reality is that it really comes down to efficiency. Like, how are we using AI to be 
to be more efficient, be more efficient in how we structure our programs, be more efficient like on the back end. It, there's so many business use cases, but also how are we being more efficient in how we're buying and managing media programs at the end of the day for our clients too. It should be an interesting and very uh, vivacious year next year, I think. It sounds like the theme, Liz, is nuance, not noise, right? Yeah, how do you absolutely. Intricacies to really deliver the right message to the right people using, frankly, more data signals than ever while simultaneously dealing with what happens with walled gardens and first party data as, you know, we talk about cookies a lot. I feel like cookie monster at this point. But, you know, you know, the buzzwords of the issues that marketers are going to face. How do you really embrace that notion of providing nuance and not just noise, especially in a year that's going to already be so loud? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that just it so easily gets lost um, when we're trying to dissect and be at, be super efficient and drive performance and you know, take everything apart to the most like detailed level, but we can't lose that nuanced element for the consumer, right? Like I think we can over-engineer it sometimes, um, but I think that's so, it's so critical to hit that. Well, let's lean in a little bit on the term efficiency. Um, efficiency is being discussed more often than not in our industry, I assume, and I will, you know, ask you as well if this sounds about right, but I feel like that term will also be used quite heavily in 2024 as marketers think about their strategies and plans for the year. What does efficiency through the lens of I prospect and serving servicing brands and advertisers mean to you? I mean, I think it means everything to us. I think it's the core of who we are as I as I prospect. I think it's what we've done since the very beginning and sort of why we were bucketed as a performance agency and then became really a full service agency because our clients really understood that we do count, look at the value of every single dollar, like from top to bottom. It doesn't matter where it lives, but every single dollar needs to be held accountable. And that's how we approach media. That's how we've always approached media. So we didn't necessarily pivot from being a performance agency to being a full service agency. But what happened was our clients really saw the value of what we bring to the table because we do you know, hold every single dollar accountable um, and we're meticulous about that. And they needed to see that from their upper funnel media as well. So it just organically, I think, evolved that way that brands were like, we need you to handle all of our media across the board because we have to go to the board or we have to go back to our you know shareholders and report back and we have to have positive gains. We're not going to get more to spend on marketing if we can't show the value of it. Um, and so I think that's really how that evolved. I think... Um, it's just sort of innate in, in every, sing, every single thing we do. And Whitney, I'm curious your thoughts on what I just said, though, since you're a little bit newer to the agency and I feel like I you know, have drank the Kool-Aid for 15 years now. So I'm just curious your thoughts on that, though. Yes. So on month six, having seen things, what I think is really interesting is, to your point, I think from what I've seen within the legacy of iProspect, right, you are a performance agency, which you could take that as a positive or negative. I actually think it's spectacular because when you think, look at the, quote, the ladder and you're pushing people down this ladder, because there's such a rigor and vigor around data and understanding the endpoints, you almost have this opportunity to reverse engineer to push consumers up and have such impact ways that a lot of places can't because performance is sort of a thing that they touch on or it's an afterthought, but it's not this embedded core tenant of the way that you view the consumer, the way you view behaviors, the way you view purchasing. So I think that ability allows you to look at the path to purchase from different angles and sort of go up the ladder, not just down the ladder, and really see the very specific lens. Yeah. And I think, you know, Chelsea, to address your specific question around efficiency, you know, I think a lot of times when our clients cling on to words like AI, what they really mean, and I think I mentioned this before, but what they really mean is I need to be more efficient. And they don't just mean in the way that they manage their their business or the way that we're running our media necessarily. They also they also are expecting us as an agency to be more efficient in how we do our jobs. Um, and so I think that's a critical a critical thing that I think we've been navigating the last few years of how do we become more efficient. Um, as an agency. And that's where I think the power of Merkle Media and iProspect coming together is a really wonderful thing because we have um, such rich heritage in performance and in CX on both sides um, of that table and able to bring those teams together and the joint, like the collaboration that happens there and the work that we're able to do to be smarter and to be faster 
And to be more efficient, um, I think only just makes us stronger. I'm going to have you both finish a sentence and then explain your response. 2024 will be the year of... Can I go with two words? Ruthless focus. I think we, our consumers are going to have a lot of macroeconomic conditions that are very much impacting prioritization and spending. I was just looking at a data point that now that people have to start paying back student debt again as of October, one in three Gen Zs with student debt cannot fly home for the holidays unless their parents pay for it. I think you have a lot of economic uncertainty and other indicators across the world that are going to change consumer behavior. And our industry, as with most industries, are not immune to cost savings, cost cutting, efficiency needs. I think this is going to be the year where we talk a lot about the same bright, shiny objects and buzzword bingo words that we always do because we are marketers and we are optimists and we are humans. But I think this is the year where it's going to be very focused, efficient, strategic investments where when you take those big shots and those moon shots and those innovation opportunities with your innovation budget, which I hope you all have, it's going to be very focused. It's going to be incremental innovation, incremental testing towards something bigger. It's not going to be the big, bright, shiny object that you may have wanted to bet on a few years ago. It's going to be incremental wins that get you closer to what innovation means to you. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think especially when it comes to things like innovation or new things, it's all or nothing. You don't have to shoot for the moon or nothing. It's about being strategic. It's about figuring out where's our consumer and where's our consumer moving to and what are those small tests, those steps by steps that get us brick by brick towards our version of Rome when it comes to innovation or what we see the future to be. I don't think it's a bad thing, but I think this ruthless focus and ruthless efficiency is going to be forced upon us as an industry, but I think it's going to make us focused, right? We have blinders on, we know what we need to do. I think it will help with a lot of our strategic investments and opportunities. Yeah, that's a really, really good answer. So um, I agree with all of that. And I'm trying to think of something better to come up with. Um, 2024 will be the year of, I'm going to say sparking joy and Stay with me. But thinking about what Whitney just said, and with an election, with the economy and the situation that it's in, with just human sentiment and and so many things that are happening in this world that are tough to swallow and hard to deal with, and our kids have a lot more on them than they used to, it's so important for brands to not lose sight of those things. I think that's exactly what Whitney was getting at, of ruthless focus, of like, how do we make the most of what we're doing and the tools and technology and innovation that we're building in media to make those moments matter? And I think when I think about the brands that I work with and the what I want them to achieve in 2024, I want them to be able to get through by finding those moments that they can actually connect with a consumer and making the consumer happy. I think about like the old Coca-Cola like commercials and like the Christmas time Coca-Cola commercials that they bring back with and like Budweiser always brings back the Clydesdales at the holidays, like creating those nostalgia moments and times for people to really relate to a brand and feel good about a brand. I don't know. I'd love to see that. I agree. I think the onus on us is to really bring some light to the world as marketers and as frankly as storytellers. I also think we get so yes. far with, this with data. We are storytellers. We are stewards of brands helping tell their stories. You deliver utility through the stories that you tell. It, it's not a new thing. We've been doing this since the dawn of time as humans. But I agree with Liz. And maybe it's the optimist. Maybe it's because we are both just very optimistic, decent humans with children that we want to see the light in the world. And we are just bombarded by dark and we know more dark is coming. I, I think it is the imperative of a marketer to find the love, to find the light. And whether it's how you serve it, where you serve it, or what you're serving, Find ways to bring that surprise and delight, frankly, in the form of optimism, positivity, and kindness at a time where people are seeking that out and not finding that much of it. Yeah, totally. I'd love to talk about what the industry needs to start doing in order to achieve some of the things that we just covered. What do you think agencies will need to start doing in 2024? I think we need to drink our own Kool-Aid. We talk to our people a lot. We talk to our clients a lot. And we are going to be bringing these conversations about seeing around corners. I think agencies in general need to look back at their people. We can't just 
bring that love and that light and that positivity and those opportunities to our clients, we need to bring them to our people as well. I, you know, as a newbie here, I can say it has been exceptionally exciting and invigorating to see leadership like Liz, who focuses on upskilling and embedding empathy into her teams as much as she does her clients and the work that they bring to the clients. I think it's very easy to think that we are just the magic makers that serve something up. AI is going to be the tool that helps us with some of that efficiency, but it will not replace human creativity and empathy. And we often get so focused on what we need to deliver to our clients that we fail to market to ourselves. And marketers are historically the worst at marketing to themselves, right? Just as not many doctors take great care of themselves. I think we need to take the time to market to our people and not only upskill them, but upskill them with tools, technologies, which Dentsu has done an incredible job. We are leveraging partnerships and our own people to create such incredible tools for efficiency, but also embedding the messages of empathy and positivity and ensuring that that's brought into our teams and part of the ethos across the industry, right? I, I think amongst the industries, we have a very leans towards snarky industry, right? Because you, you, when you sit down at the holiday table and your uncle's asking you about Facebook collecting and selling your data, you're sitting there thinking about the conversations that you're having across every platform around data privacy and safety and security. You're protecting your industry and you are you feel like you're defending your industry and defending what we do. I think it's so important to bring that empathy and that education understanding through every person who works at your agency so that they have the confidence, the knowledge, the competency, and that leading with light to bring that through every day that we professionally bring to the table as well as personally. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think it also instills loyalty, which you don't see as much anymore. Like when I tell people that I've been here for 15 years and they look at me like I'm a dinosaur and like I'm old, but I'm not like super old um so it, you just don't see people that have st stuck around at agencies for that long anymore and i think kind of getting back to supporting our employees and giving them programs to grow giving them leadership you know growth opportunities is is super important so i, I agree with whitney there i think the other thing i would add is we have to be faster we have to be building teams that can move much quicker than they move right now. Um, I would say we, you know, we're lucky at iProspect because we kind of were born out of performance. We do have this mindset of move fast, be agile, be able to turn on a dime. But I think, you know, the bigger and bigger you get, you've got to be able to maintain that agility and you've got to be able to maintain that for your clients. Our clients, not even, you know, we've seen it with retail, right? Like retail always has to turn quickly, but we see other industries having to move so much quicker than they've had to move before. And their organizations aren't necessarily ready. Healthcare is a great example. They can't move very quickly um, within their own organizations sometimes, but they need us to be able to move fast and they need us to kind of bring them along in that journey. And so I think structuring our teams to be efficient and to be fast is is really critical. And again, that's another reason why I'm so excited about you know our two groups coming together with Merkle Media and I Prospect because it just gives us more access to incredible resources and talent that we can start to mold together and build just really strong and really, really fast teams. Because I think everything we've talked about is being agile, being able to cut through the clutter, you know, being super relentless and focused. And you can't do that um, without speed. And I think that's going to be really critical for next year. Yeah. And Liz, you already you just teed up our se my second question for this Um what should brands start doing? I think there's a lot of things I would like to say here. The number one thing I'll say is breaking down barriers internally. We know that that's a challenge for a lot of brands. It's easier in some places than in others. That's always going to be a problem. The one thing that I think really moves the needle and where we really start to see an unlock in terms of performance and in terms of you know, moving the needle for a brand is when a finance and a marketing department can come together without a lot of silos and without a lot of process and due diligence that has to happen between those two teams. If a finance team is well-versed in marketing lingo, if they're well-versed in how we manage and look at and optimize and, and review you know, marketing performance reporting, if they understand how marketing works, it's so much easier to go to them with a proposal and show them what we're seeing and what we're seeing happen in the market and to get those dollars in market quickly. Um, I think when we sit on things, 
when um, it's not, we're, we're able to, you know, we submit a proposal and it sits for six months, like the, the opportunity is lost. But I think the brands that I'm seeing be successful right now are the ones that have really integrated their their CFO and their CMO, their teams are fully integrated um, and they're able to move fast. So that's probably the most critical in my opinion. On the other end, what do partners need to start doing? We are partners and it's a partnership. This year, I'm very excited to continue to collaborate with our partners for co-creation. They have some incredible technologies and tools that they're developing, and we are very fortunate to get to have a seat at the table and see the development of these things and really give feedback on behalf of our clients of all sizes, the larger clients, the smaller clients, to ensure that the tools being developed or benefit everybody, right? They don't just benefit one size client or one industry client. They benefit everybody. It's very exciting. So I think there's a good opportunity next year for partners to really come to the table and problem solve. I think thinking outside of the box, right? I think our partners have such incredible resources. They've built unbelievable campaigns. I think where we see tremendous success is when we sit down with them and come up with with new and innovative solutions for our brands to use. You know, I think Sometimes those things can be used for a really big brand and then our partners can alter them and adjust them. And that way, even smaller brands are able to tap into some of the solutions that we've been able to come up with. So I think just really coming to the table and um, helping us problem solve is probably the biggest opportunity. All right. To round out this episode, I want to do some quick round of questions. What's one thing you didn't see coming in 2023? I think everybody knew AI was going to move quickly and break things and... It's much easier to talk about it in buzzword bingo language because no one quite knows what that means when the future is being written while you read it. And there's going to be a lot of education that's needed both on those who are designing and developing as well as consumers. You see it already with AI generated content, right? And AI generated influencers, frankly, where you already cannot tell the education, the knowledge, the guardrails, what platforms are going to do in terms of stamping content and identifying content. How do you ensure that people can get around those types of stamps? It's a lot of questions that are going to need answers, I think, quicker than anyone could imagine. Because it's already a way that people are getting their news, sharing information, marketing. And it's all fun and games till there's mass market confusion, you lose consumer trust, or there's a data breach, or there is a concern around brand safety, right? Which we're already facing. So I think Technology tends to expedite the speed of technology, which expedites the speed of future technology. I think you can't pause progress, but you need to find ways to keep pace with change. What's one of your favorite buzzwords you might have overused yourself in 2023? Buzzword bingo. Oh my gosh, yes. Plus one to Whitney on buzzword bingo. She uses buzzword bingo. How many times has she said it today? Honestly, buzzword bingo is... 70% of my job because I feel like every conversation I have to level set of, we need to make sure we're talking about the same thing. You want to talk about innovation? Let's talk about what innovation isn't so that we can define what it is for your brand. You want to talk about AI? Let's talk about AI. Let's not talk about the buzzword bingo clickbait that you saw, right? So I think I'm a big believer that you make very bad decisions when you lack confidence. Confidence only comes through education and true knowledge and understanding But that means that you have to debunk buzzwords to really get that baseline understanding so we're all having the same conversation. Liz, what about you? Innovation. Nobody seems to really understand what innovation is and like how it can actually be so powerful for brands. And so I think having a lot of those conversations has been, that's been a big one for me this year. What is your prediction for the next biggest buzzword in 2024? I think AI. But again, it's when people... When people always ask me, marketers or not, is AI going to take my job? For the most part, AI will not take your job. The person who understands how to leverage it will, right? So unfortunately, fortunately, AI is going to continue to be the buzzword because until we get that confidence through actual knowledge, we tend to speak it in buzzwords. And unfortunately, the buzzwords are going to continue to buzz, right? There's always something. It was VR for a while. It was smart devices. It was connected living. None of these things have necessarily gone away, but you have an understanding of what they are, what they can do and their limitations. And until we grasp and really wrap our heads around what AI actually is and can be for you and your brands, it will continue to be that buzzword. 
What's the most interesting thing you've asked ChatGPT this year? My son really likes for me to tell stories at bedtime, and I'm not very creative. And especially like coming out of the workday, I'm like literally racking my brain. So I have ChatGPT bedtime stories um, to tell my son. ChatGPT is the bedtime story generator. It is phenomenal. Yeah. It is excellent. You can pick genres. I need something fictional. I need something historical. Like it's truly like a gift for all the moms out there. As a new mom, I'm going to make note of that. My last question for today. What is one of your own personal goals for 2024? Swap anxiety for anticipation and maybe one day excitement, probably not knowing myself, but just finding ways to really lean into the unknown because Every single year has proven that we have no idea what's going on and what's to come. I think to that point, my I have two quick ones. Um, one would be to proactively put myself in uncomfortable situations. I think we oftentimes get put in uncomfortable situations. And I think one of the things I want to do next year is just to seek out situations to put myself in that make me uncomfortable just to better myself. The other thing is just to celebrate the small moments Um both at work and personally. So finding, you know, someone does really well on a call and finding an opportunity to celebrate that for them or, you know, my kid does something great at school or doesn't get in trouble at school. And so, like, let's celebrate that day. Um, so just finding finding the small, small wins to celebrate both the nine to five and outside of that. So it's so funny you say that. I became the cliche I made fun of, especially with COVID, where it was just so monotonous and the homeschooling, we actually stuck with it. You know, all of those absurd days where it's like National Donut Day. I have heavily leaned into that and have plugged it in my calendar. 10 out of 10 recommend the Google plugin where you can have those days because frankly, like our kids are so, I, mean, I have a four and a seven year old and they can barely keep their eyes open because they have so much responsibility and they're not even in school that really counts yet, right? But being able to come home after a long day that just feels like a long, monotonous day and break out its national handstand day or French fry day, if you really want to be sassy, you have to celebrate the small wins because the small everyday wins are really everything right now. Whitney and Liz, I cannot thank you enough for joining today. And thanks to our listeners for tuning into our Intersection series. Keep an eye out for what's next with iProspect. And in the meantime, have a safe and wonderful start to the new year.